Aloha mai kako. My name is David Lassner and I serve as the president of the University of Hawaii, leading our 10 campus system and our flagship University of Hawaii at Manoa. We serve these islands, which are the ancestral home of the Kanaka Maoli, or native Hawaiian people. My own ancestry involves centuries of wandering, but I am now privileged to make my home in lush Waiomao within Palolo Valley, in the Ahupua'a of Waikiki, within the Moku of Kona on the island of Oahu. I am personally grateful to this place and her people, both of which have embraced me for over four decades. Over 125 years ago, Queen Lili'u Okalani yielded the Hawaiian Kingdom in these territories under duress and protest to the United States to avoid the bloodshed of her people. And it was nearly 30 years ago that the U.S. government formally apologized for this act, which it has acknowledged as an illegal overthrow. As the only public institution of higher education in Hawaii, the University of Hawaii is strategically clear in our commitment to become a model indigenous serving institution committed to the sustainability of Hawaii's people, islands, language, culture, and knowledge. This strategic imperative is named Hawaii Papa o Keao, or the Hawaii Foundation of Enlightened Knowledge. So today I welcome you all and I offer up an invitation to join us in celebrating the University of Hawaii's ongoing contributions to the advancement of indigenous Hawaiian knowledge. Mahalo. Aloha mai kako. I am Maynette Kapiahiokalani Patikanani Benham, Chancellor of the University of Hawaii West Oahu and Co-Chair of Hawaii Papa o Keao with Chancellor of Maui College, Dr. Louis Hokowana. Hawaii Papa o Keao was established in January 2012 and consists of representatives from all 10 campuses. The purpose of this presidentially appointed committee is to set goals and objectives to address the higher education needs of Native Hawaiians through three pathways, leadership development, community engagement, and Hawaiian language and cultural parity. At our first meeting this school year, our discussions focused on how our Native Hawaiian students, faculty, and staff, and their families were managing this challenging time. Committee members shared that folks on their campus were feeling isolated, disconnected, and depressed due to the psychosocial, emotional, and economic impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic. So we asked, what could Hawaii Papa Okeao do? And after some discussion led by Tapori Tangaro, representative from Hawaii Community College, we decided that we wanted to address indigenous well being through the nourishment that can be found in the abundant talent and knowledge across our campus communities. Hence, the birth of the inaugural Hawaii Papa Okeao series, He Ukana Aloha. Kakilo Wea. Mahalo for joining us today, and we hope to see you and your family and friends every month through June of 2021 as we lovingly share this makana with you. E nanea kako ika ike kupuna i ho'owili ai mai kikilo mai. Enjoy and be enriched by the wisdom passed down from our kupuna through so many generations to us today. Aloha. No tihi la we a te aloha aloha na li o ka ke le ta mo a na aloha na holo ma mu a holo ma ho pe
לא כמהמה האלים. אמי חמא חני עולה וני ויחיה אהה אוכה עולו עולו אקי פמאי חמאה נאי חפולי אוכה נני ולבי פאי אקו New Helevai, Avahipanna, a storied place. At the Na'au of Kapa Lama Ahupua, where Haumea made her home, where Ka'ulu laid the nets of Makali'i, where Lepia Mua colorfully fought, where chiefs took residence, where fresh springs fed lo'i and nurtured fish ponds, and where trees sway in the Olau new wind. New Helevai, a fertile aina rich in Mo'olalo, a Ola new Helevai. Lelina mai, hiki aloha kato apau. Greetings to everyone and mahalo for joining us today. for Honolulu Community College's Eukana Aloha Ka'akilawea presentation. This is our part two or second presentation for Honolulu Community College. Um, it's entitled, Ho'ike Amaka Ka'aina O Niu Helewai Ami Kapalama Ike Ya'au, a tour of today's Niu Helewai and Kapalama. My name is uh, Humu Alapaki Luke. Uh, I will be your co-host today. I am the um, Hawaii Papua Keao representative for Honolulu Community College and um, associate professor in Hawaiian studies and Hawaiian language at Honolulu Community College. I am uh, co uh, my fellow co host is Kalani Kaapa Flores. He is the culture and place based coordinator as well as the Hawaiian studies instructor. Kalani? Aloha. Mahalo ya oi. Alapaki. We're so excited to be back with uh, with all of you folks and to most of us share more about our Kapalama and Niwi Helebai Aina. Before we begin our presentation, we would like to first take the time to honor our Moikane, Nota, Tapuaiva, Kinkamemeha the fifth, with the Mele Hula entitled Kamemeha Edima. Again, this Mele honors King Kamehameha V and speaks about the steamship Kilauea, which our Heukana Aloha Ka Kilauea series is named for. Nalaila enanea mai kemeleo, kamemeha edima. Kaukau. Ai. Ni aloha ia kila wea. Pa. Ni aloha. Ni aloha ia kila wea. Thank you. 
Ai, he ino ano kamehameha e lima. Mahalo ho aku to our three haumana who volunteered to be our featured olapa, and they are Kale Hasegawa, Kiha Rodriguez, and Kaulana Stanley. Before we begin our presentation, we just have one small announcement that we'll be conducting our Q&A session at the end of our presentation. So please hold your questions um, till the end. Our first presentation will focus on land use history of Kapa'alama and Niwihele Bay, as well as Honolulu Community Colleges, Mala and Hale. To enlighten us with this ike will be our co-host, Alapaki Luke. Mahalo nui kalani. I'm going to start sharing my screen. Hello, my everyone. Um, I'm going to cover Vahipana and New Helibai and Kapalama. Uh, I selected Olelo no Iao, He Mehiu Hiu Mai Na Kupuna Mai, number 817, which um, translates as habits acquired from the ancestors, such as fishing, farming, uh, and sciences that cultivate abundance. So um, I just want to explain that. You know, I'm going to cover everything about New Helibai and Kapalama, where our home community college campus is located from the time of Western contact to now. So a more recent history. Uh, in the first segment, two weeks ago, we talked about Molelo of New Helibai and Kapalama. And now we can talk about more of the recent history. Um, you know, something not, not just um, known for Costco and warehouse buildings, Kapalama and uh, New Helibai have a rich history. So uh, we're in the Kona district, or which is called Honolulu today. And um, Kapalama is this Aukwa here uh, from the sites of Oahu. We have a map that's encircled. Kapalama is unique in a sense where most Aukwa are valleys. Yeah, uh, Kapalama is actually more, uh, when you go Mauka is a ridge not necessarily a valley, it's bordered by Kali and Honolulu. Uh, and from sites of Oahu again, uh, Neo Helibai is referenced right here, and that's the flat plain uh, below, I would say School Street. Um, it might be easier to explain. And that's where our campus is located in our community of Neo Helibai. And this is a uh, couple of lama today, right? Um, this is a Google map image of all the industrial as well as the uh, residential in the Mauka areas. So um, traditional Hawaiian subsistence is well known in New Helibai uh, for Lo'ikalo um, because of um, the water. And you might be thinking, where's the water? Uh, well, I'll explain more. But in the past, it was a wetland. So we would have Lo'i and Lokoi'a for fish ponds, and even John Papa Ii and Samuel Kamakao mentioned Kamehameha Farm in Kapalama, as well as other places like uh, Kailua, Kawainui Marsh, I, I, Nawa, it was more of a wetland instead of a marsh. Um, other places on Oahu after his, you know, uniting of the islands. Uh, Mahele records indicate that we have at least 45 Lo'i now, wetland thermal patches within our main campus boundaries. So, the Land Commission awards uh, have records that people claim their awards for their tenure in the campus boundaries, and they declared 45 low thermal patches. Yeah. And uh, we did this at DEA Advanced Technolog Technological Training Center. Um, environmental assessment and I was asked by the University of Hawaii Environmental Center in 2010 to um, comment on that report. So this is a map from 1855, uh, Joseph La Paz, the French vessel, I'll try it. So we were this and this is middle of 1800s. Uh, 
Uh, here's another map from the War Department in 1919, showing all the traditional places. Napu'u Maya is there on the top. Here, um, the top reaches of the Aupua, which is above or part of Kamehameha schools today. And you have Waulani uh, on the right, on the Nuwanu side, where actually uh, uh, Wakea Heao is located. Alewa is these heights right here where the residentials are, the residential area is. Kalai Puhaku is uh, like a rock shelf above School Street. Kuwili, or fish ponds, there's actually Kuwili 1 and Kuwili 2 here in the lower reaches. Ibile is a section over here where we know today uh, Costco and Bow Cannery is. Kiana Kamano is the shark cave up here by Kamehameha Schools. And New Helibai is the area we're talking about. And there are two streets, Kapalama and New Helibai, that fed the waters for this area. Again, uh, and I think Robert Silva, another panelist, will expand more in his video about Kapalama and the name. Um, Lama is a type of wood that would be used to build enclosures for uh, young Ali'i who are Niao Pio to keep separated. And that was the tra tradition of Niao Pio. Uh, this is a drawing in 1836. I just wanted to show you that there's so much fish ponds here, uh, you know, from early on. Uh, so you can imagine the, the wetlands and estuaries that were there. And even Honolulu Harbor. Um, has taken on some transformation from just being a sandbar offshore of Nuanu and New Helibai streams uh, to becoming an island after dredging the harbor and backfilling the sandbar. And today we know it as Sand Island, therefore the name Sand Island. There was actually a quarantine island in the late 1800s, early 1900s uh, to quarantine. Ironically, we're in a pandemic, but in the past, um, they set up quarantine for incoming uh, immigrants who are going to work sugar plantations or others who are coming in who might have tuberculosis, smallpox, measles, and other types of uh, illnesses. Uh, this is a photo in 1890 of Honolulu Harbor and Quarantine Island behind here. So bear with me, I'm going over like over 200 years uh, in 15 minutes. So I don't want to take away from other presenters as well. Uh, I'm not sure if anybody knew that our, you know, our first Wawa prison was actually located on a fish pond, that Kuwili pond uh, on the reef. Yeah? So here's a picture of 1866. And eventually the pond would be backfilled for Oahu Railway and Land Company, ORNL. Uh, Walter Dillingham's railroad company to bring in uh, not just sugar, but pineapple. So um, this is an image of Old Hawaii um, from their website. And I referenced Honolulu Community College up here. But you notice that Kuwili and Kawa Pond are right here. And this is so close to what today is, uh, well, if, if you can see some of the buildings, uh, Doe Cannery as well as Costco, Kuili yeah, Pond. So, uh, there, are, so there are ponds here from not just the streams but from springs. Pineapple, of course, is a big part of New Helen White. Uh, in 1920, this is a view of the canneries from a Kepo Lane, and you can see that there's a big pond here, um, and these were actually duck ponds for uh, raising ducks. Uh, and this water source, again, you see some more water here. In the, in the, this is like taro patches actually, or other ponds. And this is another 1934 pineapple cannery. Some of you, um, well, I don't want to date myself, but maybe you're familiar with working in a cannery before when it was operational. So uh, here's the cannery again. And you can see some of these buildings, they look familiar like this one. They're still there, Bill Cannery, the shops and the offices. 
Uh, do you see all the water and all the taro patches here in this uh, oval? Uh, this is this tells you how much in 1923 how much water and our campus is right here more to the right uh, that these wetlands had. And then in the 1930s, um, it was you know uh, just like Aloha Canal in Waikiki. They, they thought they should drain the waters. And so on the left here is a mosaic of uh, Kapalama where they were thinking of putting a canal. And the canal, just like the Alawai Canal here on the right, would drain the waters, uh, the waters of New Helewai. And you can see on the right here, there's still water, but this canal would eventually, when they backfill all of this area, the water would find its way to the canal and Kapalama Stream, actually, there's remnants here. You can see it going into the harbor right here. Yeah, this is, but today it's all diverted more Malka into Kapalama Canal. And I'm gonna um, share a video with you about, about the area and what we're doing on campus. The sound of fresh kalo, or taro, being pounded into poi. This kalo is fresh from Honolulu Community College's garden, Kamala o New Helevai, located towards the pico, or the center of the campus. Every April, the Honolulu CC community comes together for the college's annual Ho'olaulea to celebrate the bounty of the garden and to help raise awareness about Hawaiian culture and sustainability. The garden is to promote food security in Hawaii, to supplement our food, to create more awareness for the young ones. We also promote organic growing as well as sustainability. Here we are at Kamala O'Neill Heliway, which is the, um, the taro patch, dry land taro patch on campus. We um, started planting kalo over here in 2011. We have rows of lehua planted right next behind the preschool um, on the back part of campus and we started this because we find out we found out when we did the research that we had 45 uh, lo'i kalo on campus um, back in the 1800s early 1900s according to the land commission awards but all this area was backfilled with material and um, uh, so the wetlands were filled in when the Kapalama Canal was stretched. I'm here on campus uh, next to Kokea Street at Honolulu Community College parking lot. This is the approximate location of where New Helivai Stream used to flow. If you take a look more Mauka towards Mauka between these warehouses is where the there's still the existing new Helivai stream bed that flows underneath this concrete parking lot today. We're over here on King Street uh, right before Kapalama Canal and Kokea Street. I, I wanted to come and show everyone the, the remnants of New Helipai Street Bed, which is still here. And I think I showed you earlier on the end here by that warehouse, our campus building is in the background, is where uh, the stream continued right onto our campus, New Helipai Stream. And this is right on King Street, right down from Kaumakapili Church. Uh, but apparently the remnants of New Helibai Stream uh, is underground once it exits right here by uh, Ferguson Outlet and Palama Market. But so New Helibai Stream is to flow in this direction, I mean from this direction, Mauka, all the way to Makai. But now the water is actually drained into Kapalama Canal over here. Uh, 
about I'd like to thank Rocky Nidro for helping me edit those videos. That video. Sorry. So this is a, a, a picture from 1937 of Neo Hellebuy Street. Um, our campus would be right here, um, the higher reaches. And you remember on that video, I was over there by Palama Market. This is the wall right here on the right of Neo Hellebuy Stream. And this family uh, must have had water because they're very curious about what's flowing in that in that stream bed. Um, it's pretty neat pictures from uh, Sitting County of Honolulu on King Street. And this is Neo Hellebuy Stream looking diamond head by the cannery. You see all the water. And then right after they dredged the canal, this is how the canal looked. Very different from today. And looking Malka from the train yard, which I mentioned earlier. And this is the Watanabe property on the Ohelewai stream. Their house is right there on the stream bed. And um, I like to show this picture every time because it, it just reminds us of how it, it is a wetland and they backfill it, but not necessarily it's it's not high enough when it rains. And this is September. 2015, I think a remnant of a hurricane passed through that summer. And if you see our uh, mala here, it's actually underwater. Yeah. So it became a lo'i for a little while. And this is the next year when uh, remnants of Darby came through um, Do Cannery, which is right on Kuwili Pond, remember? And the flooding. So if you ever go there today through the shops, they keep their sandbags right in front of their store because no sense they move them in case it rains like the past three weeks. Um, and um, just to you know emphasize how much water was in the area, this is an overlay of a map done by Jason Jeremiah from Okawea.org. Uh, and all of these ponds, yeah, were wetland ponds. And now we're gonna um, show you one more video about what else we are doing in um, on our campus to bring back some of the significance? Aloha, I'm over here at the courtyard at Honolulu Community College. This is like our Pico courtyard has all the student services and the Haleaina cafeteria. But first of all, I wanted to show everybody this mural of New Helevai in the courtyard, showing the New Helevai stream with the kalo and uh, the new or the coconut flowing down in the water to the Loi wetlands. And all the neo tree and the ulu tree and the makali'i nets or the significance with the net and the local ia near the shoreline yeah. um, so some of the mo'alelo was already introduced in our first series and this mural depicts that those mo'alelo aloha ho we're over here at the Hale in the courtyard. We completed this Hale two years ago. It's a Hale Halabai or a meeting house. And um, it's used to welcome Malahini or visitors as well as uh, hold meetings or uh, workshops and, and classes. It's a, it's a living space, it's not just to look at. But what's significant about this hale is, um, as far as Honolulu Community College, we wanted to bring back um, some significance of the traditional uses of resources, especially in Kapalama, Haupua, which is known for the pa, or the enclosure of lama, lama wood, for um, ali'i ni pio keiki that would be separated uh, because of their status 
but uh, this hale is more of a, a meeting house which is uh, traditional in design using actually invasive mangrove in Heia which is uh, the fish pond they're trying to get rid of this type of mangrove and it's a very dense and heavy solid wood it's perfect for hale building and we're under the guidance of uh, Kumu Palani Sinensi and he's the master hale builder who's built many hale all over even outside Hawaii the campus and the students staff and faculty we got to learn from him how to construct this hale so uh, let's take a tour this hale has coordinates that is um, aligned with west and east we're facing more west. Um, this is where um, the sun will set, Komohana. But when we go east, the opening for the entrance is facing Kaikina. And we'll enter through Kaikina. And we have some students here um, tending to the hale. We actually have a more modern pahele or concrete quarry um, but the uh, thatching is lolu sand palms and we even have trees outside the hale to um, make sure we have resources um, right here and we even have if you look closely on the, the ceiling there are smoke alarms that trigger modern fire sprinklers uh, to bring it up to code to see a county this holly actually has a permit and we also have um, you know for modern technology and devices plug-in so this is our holly halawai um, here in new halawai on our main campus at honolulu community college mahalo Okay, mahalo for, um, again to Rocky for the video. And um, I'd like to thank you for hearing my presentation and we'll have a QA and a later. Mahalo nui. Mahalo nui, ala pakino ka ho ike ana mai o ke mau ike. So wonderful. But as Kuba ala paki mentioned in his presentation, Kapaa Lama and New Hele Bayu was known to have an abundance of fresh water flowing throughout the land. In our next presentation, we'll hear more about a small two-acre park that most people on Oahu have most likely never heard of. But first, let's take a short commercial break. Aohe ulu e loa'ai kapo kole o kolo. No breadfruit can be reached when the picking stick is too short. The Hulili Kekukui Hawaiian Center at Honolulu Community College is located in the Pico of campus, and our mission is to perpetuate Hawaiian culture and support our Native Hawaiian students. Our facilities are a valuable resource to our students, employees, and community, and they include a student lounge, a multi-purpose room for studying and hanging out, and a computer lab. We provide a wide array of comprehensive services, including academic and career advising, college and career development activities, hands-on cultural activities and field trips, culture and aina-based professional development, and malama aina service learning opportunities. We are proud to service New Helivai and we look forward to helping you reach your aspirations. Wonderful. If you ever visit us in person, please check out our New Helivai or actually our Hulili Kekukui Hawaiian Center. 
Mahalo to Kalea Aloha Lamho, our Hawaiian Center Director, and Rocky for also putting together that wonderful commercial. Our next presenter is Kumu Robert Silva, Assistant Professor in the Automotive Technology Program. He will be sharing more about the hidden gem, which was once part of, a, of the vast network of Lo'i throughout Kapala and New Helipai, known today as Lo'i Kalo Park. Hey, Aloha Kako. Um, so I'm Robert Silva. I teach automotive, I teach electrical and AC. Um, I love to malama kaina. You know, my two favorite things is to malama the aina that surrounds us and to fix the cars that pollute it. So um, I put this video together. I wasn't sure right now I actually have class. So I wasn't sure if I would be able to sit here, but so I made this video and we can start playing it. Hello, so I'm Robert Silva. Um, this is um, Loi Kalo Park. Um, traditionally, it's known as Neo Hele Bai. Yeah, so this park, um, I kind of came here for a while ago. So when I walked worked across the stream at Damien, uh, that was the first time I came to Neo Hele Bai. And um, that was with the Hawaiian Club. So after that, I went back to school at HEC. Um, at HEC, we had a, um, had a volunteer community day and it was again at this place that's when I um, met the original people who um, started restoring this park yeah um, so that was the second time I came over here and so I was at I was a lead tech at Toyota and then I ended up going back to teach at HEC and when I came back to HEC the first place that I came was over here because I wanted to see how the place looked and it was horrible yeah um, this whole pond the grass was about this tall yeah And um, I walked from this place, from this side to that side without touching water. Yeah, so um, it kind of was, was forgotten about, and that's when I came back to this park. Um, so this water was pumping out of this place all day long. Yeah, we're gonna see it um, pumping over there. I did the kind of cheapy way of seeing how much water, but it fills up a five gallon bucket in about two seconds. Yeah, so that's how much water is coming out of here. It's not coming from the streets. It's pumping out of here around along the edges of this whole Oahu that runs around it. You see freshwater springs coming out, yeah. Especially in those um, those Oahu that's in the middle of the, the water. It's really cold water at the base of those rocks. Yeah, so this whole place is just making water. Um, this is a sacred place. Yeah, they say that at New Helebai, um, that's where Haumea lived. Um, Haumea is the goddess of birth and fertility. Yeah, so all of the Ali in Kapalama, so we're in Kapalama right now, that's our Ahupua. So all of the Ali came down here, and this is where they cleansed and gave birth. Yeah, so they talk about the birthing stones. Um, some of these stones over here are pretty comfortable. Yeah, they kind of cut out. I'm not sure which stones are the ones that they're talking about. Yeah, but there's a lot of stones that are pretty comfortable. Um, so these little islands of all this grass, well, it's not grass, but it's ai. -ai. It started out as ai. -ai. Now this is all Ong Choi that's growing crazy. So um, we gotta kind of clear this area out. Um, when we first came back from the COVID shutdown, this whole place was covered. Yeah. Yeah, with grass. So it was like several months of just not touching it. This California grass just kind of took over. Um, but um, right now, this is our next project. Right over here. So if you look at the color that we're growing, this is um, Faifa Usi. So it's a different type of color. You see the purple on the um, on the stem or the ha. Yeah, this one actually it tastes all right. Um, when you make kulola out of it, you definitely have to cook it longer. Yeah, than um, than other carols. Um, right here is the section that this is actually the first section we planted when we first came here, and I would say it was about this wide. It was a little circle. Yeah. That was the first place we planted. So this is the one we're gonna harvest this one this week. Different types of kalos. Um, that's, this one right here is Pili Aloha. We got some pico right over there if you see that leaf. Yeah, so this is the first place that we cleared out. The grass was about this tall and then we kind of just started walking in water. 
and then we kind of cleared out. So all this pohaka was here before. Me. Yeah, so it was actually made for this area. I'm right down here is a spring. So this this puka right over here flows the water from here into the stream. Yeah. But if you look over here, uh, this is one of the ones that I fell into in the beginning. So the grass was like about this tall. And while I was walking, I kind of fell in and I still didn't know there was water. Yeah? But after we started clearing it, there's actually springs along here. So this kalo in here is there's a bunch of different ones. Um, some of them are the lena lena. The lena lena, if you look at the branches of it, so it's kind of a green stripey kind of look. Yeah, it actually makes a yellow poi. Um, um, but. This one, as you can see, is there's a lot of bugs up, up here. Yeah, so we've been spraying that kind of more natural um, spray on it, trying to get rid of these bugs. Um, normally, this collar, I would say, me standing here is about that tall. Yeah, but I would say maybe in September, these bugs started going on there and they're kind of dropping. They're growing back and they start getting better. Um, we try to harvest when everybody's here on Saturdays when, the, when you get the um, community days. So at least everybody can experience the, the harvesting and the planting and the cleaning. And then we can eat some high after that. Yeah. So this section was our first section we came back, back when our COVID really shutdown started. So me and my boy started cleaning this one. And we planted this, so this is actually supposed to harvest. But we planted this, this area, that's why they're getting smaller. So once you start getting smaller, then you know that the eagle and the meat is getting bigger. Yeah, but this is the first section we did after the shutdown. From there on, then we had one every month. So this coming year, we should be harvesting every month. Yeah, every month we should have a, a mala to harvest. So this right here, this is the ai. So I actually planted, which I don't know, like maybe five years ago, I brought a little pack, maybe one foot by one foot, you know, circle or a squarish kind of, and I put it in here and then now it's just growing. Yeah, so that's all the little patches out there. That's all ai. So the ai, the root of the ai is supposed to clear, um, filter the water. Yeah, and so underneath, that's where the fishes go. It kind of filters the water. So it helps clean the water. We planted this one maybe a couple months ago, maybe December or so. Um, this is Aka Akai. Yeah, so the Aka Akai is that I planted over here. Sometimes it just grows kind of crazy too. Um, uh, but the Aka Akai, when it's dried, the leaf actually dries, and they use this to make hala, like kind of like la hala mats. Yeah, so when you put them together, you make your mat, flippy flippy. Yeah, so it's kind of all bust up, but that's the idea. Yeah, so they actually use this type of leaf to make mats that was located underneath the lauhala mats. Yeah, because it was so much easier to make and you, know, you didn't have to pull off thorns and all that kind of stuff. They use this on the bottom of the of the mat because it just wasn't as hard to make as what you got to do with lahala when you put all of these guys together so if you make this mat it's a little fatter it's a little softer and this went under our lahala mats before in the holidays
and you know we're just here trying to restore it and try to make the water flow you know all we invite all here all yeah so those water that's coming out of the ground is it's real it's not dirty water it's coming from our aquifer and this water over here we used to drink yeah so this was actually a board of the water supply park um, we used to drink this water but 25 years ago they found that there was pesticides coming out of it yeah so it takes 25 years for pesticides to go in the ground to the aquifer so about 25 to 30 years ago people just started spraying roundup and now it's coming out with the fresh water so ever since they um they tested that in the waters we don't drink this water anymore but they do use it as a water level for the aquifer yeah so just think about what you're doing when you're, when you're going to spray something on the sidewalks yeah you never know where that pesticide is going to affect you know the ecosystem pretty much yeah and the water that comes out of our you know our vailele or our waterfalls yeah that flows down our streams you will be affected by that poisons So this is a bunch of different types of color. Um, right here, people think this is a weed. This is popolo, yeah? I mean, you can use the, the berries for dye. It actually tastes not bad. And uh, these are different types of colors right here. Um, this guy right here, this is uahi apele, yeah? Um, this is kumu ula, ula different type. Um, this guy right over here is lihi lihi molina. And so there's all different tiles when you're looking at it. Some people think kalo is kalo and all same, same. Right, but it, there's totally different types. Here's a pico, this is pico uliuli. Yeah, so if you look at this one, the loud, you got the pico in the middle, and then the leaf goes to the pico. Yeah, so that's how, this is a kind of easy one to notice if it's a pico style. The speckled one is the elepayo. Yeah, so if you look at the leaves with all the white speckles, that's an elepayo type. So many different types of color. I, mean, I try to grow different ones so that everybody can see that there is different types of color. Yeah, it's not all the same. It's not the same kind of poi that you buy at the stores. Yeah, they make all different types of poi. So um, I started with little rose and then maybe one day we can move it into one of our models that's only gonna grow elephaya or only gonna grow pizza. Yeah, but we'll see how that goes. But we struck water here. I hear Kavaya Akani. Na na kavai okani. In December, and so that's why we kind of made this little mala. So this is a new one. Just planted these guys maybe like in December or so. Yeah, so all of these guys started out as being kind of small, but different types. Yeah, it's like a little library. So this is a llama tree. So I planted this tree, I had it at home for a while, but this is the name of Kapa Lama, yeah? So this Lama wood is the sacred wood. Yeah, this whole Ahupua used to be covered with Lama tree. I think, I could say that this is the only Lama tree in the whole Ahupua, yeah? Um, it's still growing at least, I had it in a pot. It was from an air lay up in um, Manoa Cliff Trail, but it's still growing out of water all the time. But hopefully it grows, yeah? I mean, we need more Lama trees in Kapa Lama, yeah? Hopefully people, come here and learn about Kalo and they, hopefully they want to go grow it. Yeah? They take it home and they grow it. And I think that's the main reason why I come here, is to connect with the community, connect with the Aina. And if people can come here and actually do this stuff and hopefully they continue, yeah, or they want to do it. They take it home and they grow some Kalo, right? And, and give it to their families. So that's the goal. And um, if you're ever not busy on a Saturday, see you here. Mahalo, Louis, Kumo Roberts, for sharing with us all the amazing work at Mokikalo Park. Oh, mahalo, mahalo. Join us for the Q&A after.
Uh, we will now like to transition from Malka to Makai. Our final presenter is Kumukai Lani Murphy, Assistant Professor in Hawaiian Studies. Uh, so we'll be presenting on uh, the history of Kea, Keahi Lagoon, and Marine Educational Training Center and our whole Kele program. Hi. Mahalo and aloha mai kako. Although I can't see everyone's faces, it's wonderful to have you all here. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to our new Hele Vai Now. Um, <clears throat> unlike Robert and Alupaki and Rocky, of course, I, uh, I don't have the same technical skills, but I um, hope you can bear with me and I hope everything works correctly. I'm going to share with you, um, I have a couple I actually split up my um, what I'm going to share between um, what I'm going to start with is Moka Wea. And I am glad that Alapaki um, already gave a, a good intro of this area. And so I'm going to have um, I'm going to have these slides just run while I talk story. <laughs> and um, so these are some of the maps that Alapaki already shared with you. Um, some older, the older view of this area. So you can also see we have up in the right, um, bottom right, I guess. And um, the area that I'm going to kind of focus on, Mokawea, at the bottom of the street now, and all the fish ponds that were there. And definitely we have Um, here's my little plain view of Mokawea and um, the Marine Education Training Center. So a few more pictures of Mokawea just so you can see. I also want to bring into this presentation who would be much better at sharing about this this little Mokupuni um, Kehau Lani Kupihea. Her ohana is from this, this island actually. She has roots there and she continues to malama that place. Um, Auntie Joni Bagud, she is a resident of Mokawea, so Oahu is her mainland. And um, Kahale Saito and Kale Aloha Lampo, they got out of sharing about Mokawea, but they really connect many of our hamana with, with the island. Um, and here as well, of course, Kalani, one of our hosts, uh, who, who is the alaka'i of um, Alaho, a culture and Aina based professional development um, program to better serve our OEV students, um, ensure their success, and connecting them with our entire Ahupua'a um, from New Heliway, uh, up at Lo'ikalo Park, even up at Ho'ulu Aina in the back of Kalihi Valley, and then all the way down here to Makai <coughs> at Mokawea. Also, I want to point out here in this picture, Dean Crow in the on the left. Um, I'll kind of mention him again in a later photo. But um, but yeah, this is a special um, Aina. Actually, Kehau. Every time we go out there, she you know we um, introduces that place to anyone who comes. Um, we get to go check out what's what's on the reef. So excited, <laughs> faculty and Havana. <laughs> But um, yeah, I didn't realize the way way of this place until um, hearing Kehau Lani talk about it. Um, its connection to um, chief voyaging as well, um, holding the, the Ipuho Okele or the navigation cord on that island. Actually, I like this little, <laughs> some of the goodies you get to see when you're out there walking the reef at Mokawea. Um, Alapaki and John DeLay, both do um, geography, doing something suspicious, um, checking the water <laughs> quality out there. Um, there's lots of, lots of things gather on this island that come from Mauka. Um, so it's always, anytime you are, have the opportunity to visit Mokawea, uh, and Lani and Auntie Joni really appreciate the, the help in picking up other people's opala that end up there. Um, planting, do a lot of, um, try to regrow what can over there on the island. Um, but this is one of the last fishing on Oahu 
Oahu. Um, this is a cultural center that actually um, Haoleni is trying to uh, make available for the community. And that is the hale that um, Dean Crow and his carpentry gang helped to, uh, are helping to rebuild. Okay, so that's a little spiel on Mokowea. Definitely uh, not gonna catch everything about that island, but hopefully um, in our Q&A time, folks will want to um, add to that. Okay, now I'm going to shift gears to, oh my God, end that show first. Okay, um, so that's a little quick introduction to Mokawea. As I said, my esteemed colleagues and dear friends would have been so much better at introducing that place. But the next place I wanna share is in that same wahi. Um, but just across the, what is now um, a dredged seaplane runway <laughs> across from Mokawea on the mainland, Oahu, is the Marine Education and Training Center. So this, um, this area is, as Alapaki mentioned, um, Sand Island, the older name and older name of the area, Mauliola. Um, and always, whenever we go out with Kihaulani, we're reminded, got to call places by their real names. So yeah, we have this, this um, facility, which is an off-campus site um, of Honolulu Community College. Um, I have the great privilege, privilege of being there since about 2003. Um, Want to share some mele though with you before I continue. Hope everyone can hear this. Paula Funga and Kaumaka Iwa Kanahele. I want to say so much more, but my slides are going to just go. <laughs> um, yeah, so Hokulea has been at the Marine Education Training Center since 2003. This is Bob Perkins on the right and Keala Kimura on the left. Um, they are both faculty, uh, faculty and staff at the Marine Education Training Center. Um, <clears throat> 
it was originally is a small vessel fabrication and repair program was housed there. Um, I like to say that the VA have kind of taken over <laughs> the small vessels and we have more big VA there now. Um, but it's it's just a wonderful, um, it's awesome to have this uh, seafront, ocean front, I guess, <laughs> um, as part of our campus. Um, it's kind of rare to have space like this, um, especially on the south side, this corner side of Oahu. Um, but yeah, we really, I, um, again, having had spent time with Kehau Lani out at Mokawea and hearing her stories, I realized that the Va'a are in a great place. It's um, the connections that Mokawea has with voyaging um, and <coughs> uh, fishing, of course, it's, it's just, meant to be, you know, um, and I hold my courses there. I teach Ho'okele, I teach voyaging, and these are my students. Um, I get to have them work on the va'a, and they get to sail on the va'a. Um, these bigger va'a, they they have so much um, mana, and it just it inspires, um, I think it inspires learning. And so being able to, to provide opportunity for them to touch, feel, be a part of. Yeah, baby. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and be stoked oh. <laughs> out on the ocean. Um, just developing that relationship with nature, um, learning the stars, even through virtual reality, we get to do some of that. Um, in person, we get to get really close. Um, because we really are like uh, an Ohana crew and the Ba'a. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I think it's also the the big Ba'a have inspired all kinds of learning and um, the facility, uh, these are students that went through the Small Vessel Fabrication and Repair Program and helped to build this Ba'a that, um, that I use for my classes. So this is Kama Uhehu. Um, it captures Papa Mao's name in there, our, first navigator for Hokulea. Um, the students in the program built the canoe. My students in the Ho'okele courses helped to put her together, lash on railings, um, also helped to malama her. Um, so they get to build these skills around the smaller ba'a that we could actually paddle um, and sail um, that apply to the larger ba'a. So these are like, this is such a, a great um, training vessel. Um, also it gets us, sometimes gets us out to Mokawea, um, <clears throat> but just um, again, creating that pilina with, with our natural surroundings, but also with each other and um, Few, I'm pretty proud that a, a handful of students that have come through my Ho'okele courses are involved in the worldwide voyage, Malama Honua. Um, Bokula went around the world for a few years <laughs> and, um, and actually have a, a Haumana that came through my course that is actually also teaching Ho'okele now. Um, that's kind of like my my little cycle too. I was a student in Ho'okele back in the day. Um, and then I just also wanted to have some pictures that show the, the connection between Honolulu Community College um, with our, with the voyaging Ohana, um, participating in Hokulea's homecoming back in 2017. Can't believe that was three years, ago, four years ago now. Um, but anyway, yeah, so there's a few more, <laughs> a little quick, a quick intro to METC. And I know we're kind of um, pushing it on the time. So I'm going to stop talking and we'll just see if we have any time for questions. Mahalo. Mahalo, Nui. Mahalo. Uh, to end our presentation series, we would like to close with a hula ma'i that honors the Kamehameha family in Tana Punana Kamanu. And following that, we'll go straight into our Q&As.
So at this time, we'll open it up for questions from our audience, and you can put it in the Q&A box. Uh, we'll take maybe five minutes. Sorry, we're over time. You can blame me. I might have been the culprit. But <laughs> Sorry. Tell them, Mike. Any questions? From the audience, use your Q&A. Oh, I have a question. Um, looks like a question came up. Uh, how has the pandemic affected the activities in Kapalama, New Helivai, Mokowea, and METC? So you can have all the panelists come back on. Maybe Kayilani, you can share um, you know, all the activities gone during the pandemic. I mean, it's different, I know that. Yeah, since I was the first with my video back on. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so actually since the pandemic, uh, well, since like the lockdown orders, you know, down at METC at least, that pretty much got shut down. Um, I personally didn't go there for a long time, but once, um, the, well, like my, my classes, of course, but once it, once the restrictions got a little looser, I know like PVS was taking care of Hokulea out of the water in dry dock. So they, they took all their safety precautions um, with their, uh, we have a lot of doctors involved because we need doctors when we go voyaging, but with, um, with their guidance, they were able to kind of structure a, a safe way to allow volunteers to come and help get Hokula back in the water. And she just went back in like right before her birthday in early March. Oh, mahalo. In fact, we have a question. Uh, do we need permission to visit Mokowea? Um, that go ahead. I was going to say, is that one for me? Because any of you guys could answer it too. Um, Kehau is usually our avenue to getting to Mokowea. Kehau Lani Kupihea. Um, and our all of our Hawaiian division folks really have um, coordinated with her to get to take groups out. But go ahead. Yeah. So usually we 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 ask permission. Definitely, um, they you know have different schedules, but weather permitting as well. But now during the pandemic, very limited. Uh, hopefully that changes eventually. As far as what I know. And, um, yes. But the other thing too is that. Um, you either swim or you paddle. So <laughs> there's no road, there's no pathway. Uh, well, there is a pathway, but it's via water. So <laughs> unless you had a special class from Jesus and you can walk on water, <laughs> that's the only other way you can get there. But it's usually through Kehau Lani Kupihia and her, um, her organization. Lani, you see any questions? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, oh, question. Are the volunteer times for the Lo'i available on Hansi C's uh, website? Robert? So all of this time, um, actually this past month was the first time I had permission to have more than five people at the park. And so nothing was put on Hansi C's website. Um, but starting next month, then we're going to have the first Saturday every month. Whoever comes out, yeah, just that we got to stay in 10, 10 people groups and, you know, has that protocol for the COVID thing. But that's going to be the first month since last March, you know, that we could have more than five people at the park. Um, I've been going every week, but I don't really tell everybody because I don't want to have to deal with, you know, having too many people when somebody comes to the park. But next month, we should be good. More people can come out. 
And there was another question relating to the sketch, I believe. Do you need uh, to be a Han CC Haumana? Um, no, you do not need to. Um, like Robert was saying, the uh, when it comes to Lo'i Kala Park, we always have community days. Um, but until everything truly opens back up, then we can have more people. But for now, I think it has to be um, limited. But we'll be there Saturday if anybody interested. Just bring a mask. And there's a bunch of uh, kudos in the Q and A here. Say mahalo for the information and the EK about the water and the place. And um, someone is asking, uh, Susan Kazama, Robert, where can I get kalo plants? Can I come in the mud and pick them? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when we harvest, you know, we get plenty. And so a lot of the volunteers, if they like take, they take. Yeah, so I, I give to the people who come help, but. <laughs> they and that, and yeah. That's a good That's a good question and good point, Robert, because uh, what I, you know, we're, ran out of time but all, all that we showed you today there are you know their projects or their curriculum and lessons or how we know with intention uh, for our students staff faculty and community to participate and to um, learn by doing um, so uh, same with the Kahlo that Robert's talking about if you can try and grow at your place to supplement a little bit of uh, your needs and we do that with our students in the classes so there's intention with all of these activities um, it's not necessarily just uh, for show uh, but of course the connection to place and culture and language so mahalo for that and i just have an update for those who would like to um see if they could schedule a time to go to mokawea island we have um kehaulani uh, Kupihea's email is kehaulani at keehi.org and her organization is called uh, Maoli Ola Keehi. I like that translation on the bottom. So there's one more question. Where do we find out about volunteer days? If we're, I think Robert mentioned that already about Lohi Kalo Park. Uh, we usually advertise on Malamana days for the campus. Uh, or when, you know, when we could, when there wasn't a pandemic, but check our website at honolulu.hawaii.edu. Uh, and also Ulili Kekukui Hawaiian Center uh, website, which is connected to the campus website. Yeah, you can email me. I don't know if my email is on this thing, but we are there every Saturday if you want to come check it out and see, you know, when you want to come in. Mahalo. Any more questions for our panelists? Okay, if not, we would like to send um, out our mahalo once again to all of our kumu, Almana and staff who contributed to our two-day series presentations. Yes, and mahalo to Renee and Eric at the IT Academic Technology team at for the University of Hawaii. Mahalo to Hawaii Papua Keao for organizing the Makana Waka Kilauea series. Um, yes, and, and, and last but certainly not least to all of you who are, are in attendance today for watching our presentation, those who came to our person and of course today and so with that said, we'd like to bid everybody a wonderful um, aloha and have a beautiful day in our Hawaii day. Aloha kako. Aloha oh, mai. We hope. Aho Mahalo. <laughs> to you and Robert and everybody. Are we staying down, Kako? High five all around. <laughs> Are we staying on after or? I think we still have now? some attendees still yeah. on the in. Uh, 
12. No, no, I'll do it. I'll just. I'm going to stop recording. Oh, that's right.